So I've been shooting with the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 during my trip to Japan and I can say that the results that you get from this camera is super super awesome. But the only caveat is that you don't get actual D-Log, instead what you get is D-Log M. Hey guys, I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood colorist and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can grade your footage from your Osmo Pocket 3 or any other DJI cameras that shoots in D-Log M. Because although D-Log M is not as flexible in terms of dynamic range compared to D-Log, but it's still better than shooting in Rec. 9 which is your normal mode. So before we start, the footage that I'm going to be using in this video along with some other test footage as well will be available in the link in the description below. So you can go ahead and download if you want to follow along. They're completely free for you to use for practice. I just hope that you subscribe to the channel so that we can build a bigger community. So I have this clip here which is shot on DJI D-Log M. So usually what we would do to convert log footage into Rec. 9 is to use the CSC in the effects and dragging on the color space transform effect. For the output color space, I'm going to set it to the usual Rec. 9 gamma 2.4. And for the input color space, we can see that for DJI, we have a DJI D gamma and input gamma, there is DJI D-Log. But if you do it like this, using DJI D Gamut and D-Log, you get this result, which is very punchy because D-Log M is not actual D-Log. What it is, is using the DJI D Gamut color space, but it's not using the D-Log Gamma. So if you set the input Gamma to Gamma 2.4, you will get better results because D-Log M is using more or less the same Gamma as 2.4. You can see that the contrast that D-Log M is using is not that much different from where it should already be. So when you're exposing for D-Log M, you can kind of gauge where your shadow should be based on what you see on the screen already because it doesn't really change that much once you throw it into DaVinci Resolve and color manage it. But actually, using the CSC to color manage D-Log M is not exactly the right way to do it. The way that is suggested by the manufacturers themselves, DJI, is using their own LUT that you can download from their website. So there's this DJI Osmo Pocket 3 D-Log M2 Rec. 9 LUT that you can find on their website. I'll drop a link to this in my description. So you can download this LUT and apply it in DaVinci Resolve and you get more or less a better result. Let's see how it compares with the CST technique that we have just used. So I'm going to create another node down here. Turn this off. Go into my LUTs and DJI. Here I have it. DJI Osmo Pocket 3 D-Log M2 Rec. 9 and apply. So on my left here, what I have is using a CST and on the right is using the LUT. You can see that the colors are more or less the same. I say more or less, but there are slight differences in terms of the rate here. If you're using the LUT, you get a nicer, more accurate rate. If you're using the CSC, you get a more magenta, pinkish rate. And also in the orange here, using the CSC, you get a lighter orange. But using the LUT, you get a more accurate, darker orange. So the actual best way to color manage your DJI D-Log M footage is using the LUT that they provided on their website. The other more prominent difference is in the contrast. You can see that using the LUT, we have a lot deeper shadows compared to the CST, which is more faded. This is what DJI meant for D-Log M to look like if you color manage it properly. So other than the LUT that DJI has provided on their website, I have also created some LUTs of my own in order to grade DJI D-Log M. So this is DJI D-Log M. This is their official LUT. And I've created a new collection of LUTs, which is the D-Log M base LUT. So you can see that the contrast is a lot more smoother. And I also manipulated some of the colors such as the blues, the greens, and a bit of the reds as well in order to give you a smoother contrast and a smoother final look. So the LUT that I'm showing you is just a normal Rec. 9 right now. But I also have other hybrid LUTs which are conversion LUTs plus creative LUTs such as Cine Green. So Cine Green will give you a slight more greener undertone and Emerald will give you an overcast of green. And then I also have Hollywood, which is my most popular LUT. 
in my Colorist Vote Creative LUTs pack. So this is a recreation of that LUT. And if I apply it to the rest as well, you can see that the contrast and the colors coming out from these hybrid LUTs are very nice. So I have light. Light, which just gives you a more airy feeling. So light will give you the best of the dynamic range and also give you very nice colors. And I also have Maxi Gold. So Maxi Gold will give you a slightly more golden color compared to the usual Rexel 9. Hybrid LUTs, which are very easy to use, very fast and very simple. So just one click, I'm not even doing any other adjustments and I get to the finished look very quickly because I know most of the DJI Osmo Pocket users, they are not pro cinematographers or they are not colorists like myself. So I created these LUTs to give you very good results very quickly and you don't have to understand a lot. So if you'd like to know more about these DJI D-Log M LUTs, there's a link in the description below for you to check them out. Now back to the clip that we were working on. So I'm just going to apply my Rex L9 LUT. And then we are going to start from here. So this is what I have right now, just the clip with a Rexel 9 LUT that I created. If you want to use the official LUTs by DJI, that's fine as well. It won't give you that much of a difference, just that the contrast and the colors that I get from my LUT is much nicer. So I'm going to label this LUT, all right? And I'm going to create two nodes upstream of my node tree and one node downstream. So to create a node upstream, I'm going to use Shift S, to create two nodes and to create one node downstream i'm going to use option s or alternate s if you're on windows in order to clean up my note graph i can right click anywhere in my notes palette and go to clean up note graph so i have everything very organized like this so i like to label my notes before i start you can right click on the note and go to note label or the shortcut key that i made for this is shift command l so you can make all your shortcut keys in your DaVinci Resolve menu and keyboard customization. So I'm going to use the old way of clicking on the node itself, node label. And for the first node, I'm going to label this primaries. For the second node, I'm going to label it secondaries. And for the last node, I'm going to label it details. So this is going to be a pretty simple grade. And it's not going to go very complicated because like I said, most of the Osmo Pocket 3 users are not professionals. They are mostly casual users that is using this camera. All right, so I'm going to go back into the first node, which is my primaries. So I'm going to click on it and going into my primaries palette, which is down here. All right, I have my lift gum again. I want to brighten up this whole image a little bit because as I can see from my waveform, it's sitting quite low from what I want it to be. So to brighten this up, the first thing I'm going to reach for is my gain because it controls most of the brighter areas. All right. So I'm going to lift this up, not to clip it, right? Just a little bit like this and then pull it back. So I don't want to go overboard with this, right? Just a little bit in order to pop the image a little bit more. And once I'm done with that, I see that it's slightly too warm for my taste, right? So I want to reduce down the temperature a little bit. I'm going to go into my temperature slider here and just reduce it down. When you reduce down the temperature, you get a very nice and clean look and you can even pop the skies out a little bit more. So another thing that I like to do for most of my grades is also use the custom curve and using the editable splines. So if you know my channel, you can watch this video to know more about editable splines. But what you have to do is go up to this three dot menu here and turn on your editable spline, right? And then go to the black point here, click on it. You will see that this line will appear, which is your spline. So I'm going to lift up my black point and then using the spline, I'm going to drag it back down and this creates a very nice uh, contrast, smoother contrast in order to not make it look too digital. So I'm not going to go too overboard with this, just something like this. And I'm happy with that. And I'm going to do the exact same thing to the top as well. Drag it down and then using the spline, drag it back up. All right, not too much. Maybe this is a little bit too much, right? So I'm, I don't have exact values that I'm going for over here. I'm just going by eye on what I see and not to clip this image, of course. So I think in terms of overall corrections, 
I'm doing everything in the primaries already. There's nothing much that I want to fix in terms of the overall image right now. So I'm going to move on to my secondaries node. So in the secondaries is where you start to pick things out and try to fix them individually instead of doing a very macro level adjustment in the primaries, which is affecting everything. So in the secondaries, I actually want to create more nodes because we can't pick things out in one node itself. We have to separate out each individual uh, sections of the frame itself. So I'm going to create some parallel nodes using option or alternate P. I'm going to create two and then same thing. I'm going to right click and clean up node graph. So in my first secondary node, I'm going to go into my power window into the circle window. And then I'm going to put this window onto her because she's looking a little bit too dark. So I can just roughly shape it onto her face or her whole body in this case, right? And I'm going to do the adjustment in the gain. So I'm, let's lift that up a little bit. So if I lift up the gain, you can see that the shadows are also getting lift up as well. So I'm going to counter that. Let me reduce this a little bit first, maybe 1.08. I'm going to counter that by using the lift to negative 0.2. So if I turn this on and off, you can see that she is being brightened, right? But it's not affecting the blacks too much. Maybe I want to go a little bit lower as well in order not to clip her, the white part on her shirt over here. So once I'm done with this window and the adjustments, I can of course track this window back and forth. And I'm not too particular on how accurate it tracks because it's a very wide adjustment. It doesn't have to be... Okay, now I'm seeing that once I reach here, she is actually looking too bright. So I'm going to reduce down the gain a little bit more in order not to clip too much. So I'm going to stop at 1.05. I think this is a pretty good point. But this is my hero frame, so I'm going to continue using this frame. All right. so the other thing that I'm looking at I'm seeing that needs correction is this part and also this part of the sakura, the cherry blossoms, because it's looking a little bit too dim, right? I want to brighten that up in order to complement the whole frame to make it really pop in your face. So what I'm going to do is using either a circular window or you can draw your own window using the curve. But most of the time, I'm mostly using a circle window because it gives you the smoothest results, right? Something like this, shape it onto this area, make it super soft. You can drag out this line to make it soft, or you can also soften it using the soften over here. It's the exact same adjustment. So the adjustment that I want to make over here is of course to brighten it using the gain again, right? So just by brightening this, you can see how much difference before and after. It's so much difference. It uh, really pops out the Sakuras even more, right? And what I'm also going to do is using a little bit of color boost because the Sakuras are a little bit white. So I just want to increase that pinkish tones in the Sakura. So I'm going to go maybe eight on the color boost. And you can see that it pops so much more just like this. I'm going to do the same thing for the left as well. So I'm going to copy this, go over to the fourth node and paste it, and then drag the window over to the left side of the frame. Okay, so if I drag it over, you can see that it's a little bit too bright on the Sakura's right now. So if I do it separately, I can adjust only the left side without affecting the right side over here. Right. So I can reduce down the gain, make it not too burst. And also I feel it needs a lot more color boost compared to the right side because it's more dull. So I'm going to increase the color boost on this side to around 20. Yeah, something like this. And of course, you can track these windows as well by going into the tracker window and track it back and forth, as well as the other one, track it back and forth. So now there's something that I'm seeing that 
I don't really like, which is her skin is a little bit too orange. So I can go back into the primaries, go into my curves, and there's a curve called hue versus set, which controls your saturation. So you can use your eyedropper tool on your viewer. If your eyedropper tool is not turned on, you can go down to this menu here and use the qualifier and then click on her skin. There's a point that will be made on the hue versus set curve and you can just drag this point down and it will reduce the hue that you have selected, which is orange in terms of the saturation. So I'm going to reduce this to maybe 85-ish. So I'm looking at this, which is 0 0.85 saturation. And you can see that, yeah, so I can't really see the adjustment alone, but something like this. Just a slight adjustment, but it makes the frame a lot more believable. If you like that orange, you don't really have to do this step, but I just find the orange a little bit distracting. So yeah, right now it's a little bit too white. So I'm going to increase back the orange to maybe 0.9-ish. So that's more or less done for the grid already. We have our corrections, we have our secondaries, we have our LUT. But the last thing that I want to add is details. I don't really want to sharpen this because it's not supposed to look sharpened. It's supposed to look very dreamy, very soft. So what I like to do in the details is go into my primary color wheels, into the mid-tone detail slider and reduce it there. Because the mid-tone details doesn't really affect the details or the sharpness of the overall grid. It only reduces details in the mid-tone areas, which gives you a very nice and soft effect, very dreamy. So if I enhance this, like I go full power, negative 100, you can see that what it's doing is just softening out the whole image without, make, without blurring the whole image. So you get a very nice soft look. But of course, we don't want 100%. We don't need to push it that far. We can go maybe negative 30 and see the result. So just a slight softening of the overall image. You can go a little bit heavier, maybe negative 50. And maybe that works better. Yeah, I feel negative 50 is actually nicer. So the last thing I think that we can do to this grade, because I really don't like the bursting or the clipping of the highlights over here. I'm going to go back into my primaries, into my highlight slider, and I'm going to drag this down a bit. You can see that it recovers the highlight very nicely. So let's go for negative 25. And it just recovers back the highlights so that I get a much nicer look. Something like this. So that's DJI DLOM graded with only six notes. So I hope you enjoyed this video and do check out my DJI D-Log M LUTs if you're interested. Like this video if you found something useful and subscribe to watch more. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.